When you want to show two separate views in your application, the easiest and most user-friendly approach is a tab bar across the bottom for each item you want to show. In our case, that means we'll have the menu view in one tab and the active order, the one we're looking at right now, in another tab. SwiftUI gives us a tab view view just for this purpose. And if you've come from UIKit, it works just like UI tab bar controller. Go ahead and press Command N to make a new view. And name this one Main View. This is where we're going to have our um, initial UI, which will make our tab view with content view and order view inside it. So in here, we'll uh, add our content view and our order view as tabs inside a tab view. We'll start with the code first, then I'll explain it as we go. So we've got a tab view with content view inside it and also order view inside it. Now, just by itself, that's not a lot. We want to customize how these things ought to look, how they should work at, at a runtime. Now, it's going to complain. It's very unhappy here. You can see it's erroring out all over the place um, because it's missing an environment object. I told you in one of the previous uh, videos, this is going to happen. You've got to inject the environment object because all of you expects to have one of these things provided. And so we'll say our main view has an environment object of an empty order. And then try and preview again. And boom, there's our UI looking great. At the bottom now is this gray bar matching the space at the top. That's going to be our tab view. We have tabs showing two different options, content view and order view. And we customize this using tab items. So we can say our content view has a tab item with a label saying menu and a system image of list dot dash like that. And boom, there's our menu tab item already. And order view. This has a tab item of label order, system image, square dot and dot pencil. Boom. And there we go. Menu and order both appear side by side on the right in our tab view. So let's try and break down what these things actually look like. One of these things here. So this creates our content view, as you'd expect. But then for its tab, we're using a new kind of view here called label, which combines a text and an image view at the same time. So it's like having a text and image. You can even have text and image here separately if you want to, but labels are a more concise way of doing it. And it actually adds some extra smarts of using label in your code, because it means as the text gets bigger, make the image bigger at the same time and keep the two aligned neatly. It does make sure to work for you, which is, which is great. Now, this label is a thing that represents our content view in the tab bar. This button you can tap to activate the menu or activate the order. And we're actually using here a system image, one of the built-in like 2,400 or so SF symbols icon set that Apple provides for us built into iOS and macOS and more. And actually an app you can download from Apple called SF symbols, which lists all these images. You just browse through them all and, and then say that one there, that's great. Copy that name there, arrow to up, bop, bin dot fill and so forth. Put that in your code and boom, you're off. So you can uh, add any image here from Apple's built-in stuff or use one of your own if you want to. Now, to bring a tab bar to life, you've got to, you've, as you saw there, you've got to inject an example order. Otherwise, you'll get that crash in the preview. But at runtime, we're still going to launch the original content view. That hasn't changed because that's controlled by iDyneApp.swift. This is what launched our app. This is the app main, the main part of our program, make the application show content view. We don't want that anymore. We want instead to say show main view. And that will show the content view. And because the main view is our tab view that has the order in its environment, it will pass through the environment order into all the views inside the tab view, all the views inside the navigation view and so forth. Every part of our program that wants the order will get the order. And now you should be able to press Command R to build and run the code. Now the tab view all looking good in the screen. Let's find out how it looks. So here's our uh, menu. Here's our current order screen. I go to the menu. I'll choose a uh, Thai red curry and press order this. And now on the order screen, boom, 
Tarot Carry 12. It automatically synchronizes. It's absolutely brilliant. Go back here and say, I want Power Muesli. Order this. Boom. Now two things. So it's working really, really nicely. And what I love about this approach is we're not doing the heavy lifting here of, you know, making different parts of our UI stay synchronized. That's all handled by this one simple environment object, Property Wrapper. That does all the work for us. Get from the environment, keep it synchronized. So as soon as the item detail screen says, yeah, add a new item, the order view reloads. It'll stay up to date no matter what. And in the background, any view that relies on an environment object will be refreshed when the announcements come in. When it, uh, uh, that object announces any sort of change using app publish or similar, yes, it will reload its view. And in practice, what this means is Swift UI will reinvoke the body property for that view. And it will then go ahead and then read the new order, order items here and the name and the price and so forth. It'll read the latest values from the environment at that point.